For thousands of years, First Nations peoples have walked on this land. As we gather, we acknowledge that we stand on the traditional territory of the Klamath Nation. May we live with respect, peace, and friendship on this land. Well, good day. I hope you have some good news today. My good news, I guess it's more gratitude that I am so pleased that we all live in, in Canada, in this beautiful country of ours. Um, when I think of other countries and how they're treating people, it, it just, it breaks my heart and I, I pray for them and I reach out for them. It's, it's not the way it should be. And Canada really are putting people first. And, and I think that is so important, especially in these times that we're living through. Well, I've lit the Christ candle and I've lit it with the, uh, the candle from the murdered and missing women and girls and two-spirited and now men and boys candle. Let us pray. Here we gather each from our individual lives. We carry into this place the joys and the worries of our week, the weight of our personal experience the anxieties of all that the future may hold. Here we gather in prayer and preparation. Here we knit ourselves into a community. Here we hold one another in compassion. Here we remember that the work you have called us to do, we do not do it alone. Come, let us worship together. And our prayer of the day, it is not for our own sake, Holy One, that we have chosen to follow in the way of Christ. We know the story. We know that the way of extravagant love is not a way to human status or worldly power. Following Jesus can grant us freedom from the destructiveness of the world, freedom from consumerism, from the constant pressure to produce, from the gaze that tells us we are never enough, no matter how much we have or how often we work out. Following Jesus means living into the promise that we are enough as we are, for God to love us and call us to be bearers of the kingdom. Yet we also acknowledge that following Jesus can make us very uncomfortable as our freedom levels the playing field and puts us all on equal footing. We are enough as we are, and so are those who have long been marginalized, despised, rejected. In your mercy, God of love, help us to show forth your love to all of creation. Help us to seek out and lift up your presence and the breaking in of your kingdom wherever we might find it in our world. Remind us that you have created and loved us with all your grace and abundance. Help us to look to you, not in clouds and light and heavenly splendor, but among the parched lands in need of rain, among those who are mostly hurt by the brokenness of this world, and among those who, without care for themselves, with the lives of others first. God of grace, help us to move the prayers of our hearts into our hands and feet. Let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught us, for God is like our mother and God is like our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So I wrote a poem, and it's called The Search. I searched for you along the path between the mountains and the seashore. I searched for you along the road, between the trees and the pastures. I searched for you along the fringes 
between the houses and the chain stores. I searched for you along the way, between your stories and my certainties. And when I stopped the searching for you, around and within me, I found you waiting patiently. And our song is This Is The Day, More Voices, number 122, and it's sung by St. Paul's United Church from Edmund, Edmonton, Alberta, and Joan Townen is the director. Let us listen. This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad. This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad. Sing in present is an excerpt from A Cup of Blessings. Joyce Rupp writes, Macrina of Widikar says, to bless is to put a bit of yourself into something. It is to make holy, to change something or someone because of your presence. It is not only the adorant clergy who have the power of the or the ability to bless. Each of us can offer blessings and each of us can be a blessing too. When we bless, it is a deep and vast goodness or godness in us that blesses another. In the scriptures, Jesus does not bestow or offer many blessings. Rather, he becomes a blessing. His presence, his goodness, engenders life, strength, healing, courage, and vitality. Many, many people have blessed my life. Probably most of them are unaware of how they have done this, unless I have deliberately thanked them for doing so. Usually they have blessed me by their smiles, their loving looks, their stories and affirmations, their concerns and their care. Once in a while, they bless me with a formal blessing, ones that include special words and actions. You may be in a place in your life where you can easily resonate with blessings, or you may be in a tough place 
where you wonder if you have ever been blessed or been a blessing. Wherever you are, I hope that you can pause today and believe in the possibility and the power of blessings. And our scripture reading is a story based on the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. Saba is the Aramaic word for grandfather, and Ima is Aramaic for mother. Aramaic is the language Jesus spoke. Bartholomew sat under a fig tree and thought about the time he had spent with Jesus. It was such a short time, but there were so many memories. Soon he heard his grandchildren coming towards him, arguing about something. Saba, Saba, Rachel won't hold the basket, shouted Matthew. I want to climb the tree, protested Rachel. Calm down, calm down. What's the problem? asked Bartholomew. I might ask us to pick some figs for lunch, said Daniel. But Rachel and Matthew kept arguing about who's going to climb the tree and who's going to hold the basket. Well, mused Bartholomew, why don't I tell you a Jesus story? That might, do, might help you sort things out. Yes, please, Saba, they all chorused, and they settled themselves on the ground next to Bartholomew to listen. They loved his stories about Jesus. Not long before Jesus was killed, he prayed for all his followers. Jesus said that he had done the work that God had given him to do. He had shown people what God was like. Now his followers were to carry on the work. Jesus asked God to guard us, and asked that we become one heart and mind. Bartholomew paused. He could see the children had trouble understanding. He wasn't surprised. It had taken the disciples a long time to understand everything Jesus had said. It's like this. Jesus wanted us to keep doing his work, to tell people about God and to help them. But we couldn't do that very well if we were always arguing. Jesus wanted us to love one another and work together. But picking figs for lunch isn't doing Jesus' work, grumbled Matthew. Doing Jesus' work means living like Jesus. What do you think Jesus would do if he were asked to pick some figs to share with others? asked Bartholomew. The children looked at each other. After a moment, Rachel said, I guess I can hold the basket. I have a better idea, said Bartholomew. I'm the tallest, so why don't I hold the basket up, and the three of you can climb that tree and pick the figs. So the three children happily climbed up the fig tree and carefully put the figs into the basket, which Bartholomew held up. The job was soon done. Then Bartholomew and the children went home for lunch. And our song is from More Voices, number 139, My Love Colors Outside the Lines, sung by Shiloh, Sticks Avenue United Church Choir, New Westminster, B.C., directed by Craig Terrell.
Thank you, Grant. The message I have chosen today I call Living Like Jesus. Let us pray. In his final hours, Jesus prayed for those who would follow him, saying, All mine are yours, and yours are mine. I have been glorified in them. May the heart of Jesus beat on in us, the beloved community of witnesses. Amen. So, how on earth do we live like Jesus? I know for me, living like Jesus is a tall order. And aren't we taught that we need not strive for perfection because, after all, it is not attainable? Some people have great difficulty and become ill over trying to be perfect. So we are advised to do our best and to accept that we are good enough. The reading today is a prayer that Jesus prays for the disciples. It is a prayer about relationships. Jesus is asking that we have a relationship with one another that is like his relationship with God. And Jesus is speaking of a quality of life resulting from a bond with God. The God of Abraham intends that all the families of the earth be blessed. The blessing Jesus prays for is that we may be one as Jesus and God are one. It is this relationship that is the benchmark for our relationships with all people. We share the good news by being community in which love is lived out. It's that simple. This prayer that Jesus prayed a couple of centuries ago is still relevant today. There, of course, is where the struggle lies for us today. Christianity has so many diverse denominations that it, that it appears that there is a disunity among churches of Christ. We argue. We argue over which meaning is behind the community bread and how it is served, and which elements are to be used, wine or juice, wafers or bread. We have differences as to who can be ordained and what words to use for the sacrament of baptism. We argue over the number of sacraments we, ha we are to have. We even argue about how we, we interact with secular groups. And the list can go on and on, causing more division and stress among Christians. But this is nothing new. The arguing has been going on since the beginning of Jesus' ministry. There was dispute about who could share in the meal, whose was the real church, whether or not those who followed Christianity were truly Christians if they did not have certain spiritual gifts. And then there's not observing children as part of God's people. So I wonder if we Christians have been at odds with each other from the conception of the church, then was Jesus' prayer for, his, for us to have a God-like relationship not answered? Let me say that again. So I wonder, if we Christians have been at odds with each other from the conception of the church, then was Jesus' prayer for us to have a God-like relationship, not answered. 
if we all have, see, I believe that we are not meant to be homogeneous Christians. If we all have our own personal relationship with our higher power, then we are bound to have different experiences in that bond. If we change our mindset and learn to accept the differences in our beliefs, we don't have to change our beliefs, just accept, then maybe we can affect our relationship with our brothers and sisters. Just because others practice their faith differently doesn't make them any less Christian. I believe that Christianity is meant to dance with the Spirit. She is full of movement and, and fluid. We just have to accept those denominations with diverse concepts, that they are also Christians. The Holy Spirit can act in our lives to draw us closer and to re reveal to us the presence of God that is already nearer to us than our own heartbeats. We have only to open our eyes, our ears, and remain willing to receive and respond. We may experience struggles with our wild and sometimes frustrating Christianity, but we can still remain true to our relationships. We are the body of Christ with many parts and called to do Christ's work in reconciling all people with one another. So this week, write your own prayer for yourself, for Powell River United Church, for your own church, and all Christian denominations, and see where the Spirit leads. Our song is More Voices number 217, Heineyana and it is sung by the gathered singers of Royal Heights United Church in Delta, BC. Let us listen. space, full of the tenderness of Jesus' care for each one of us. Go out into your world, carrying with you the abundance of God's grace and love, and letting it overflow as blessings. Go, knowing Christ is with us, still calling us to life and love. 
May the grace of Christ Jesus and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Hallelujah. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ.